Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. The purpose of the video today is to talk about calibration frames, in particular flat, flat dark, and bias. And, um, and uh, for the purpose of this discussion, it's important to understand uh, that the camera that I have is the ZWO ASI 294MM uh, Pro and there is a characteristic with regard to its CMOS sensor that may not be a characteristic in other CMOS cameras uh, but because of the characteristic in this camera uh, it changes a little bit on how I'm going to handle my calibration frames. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm using Nina. I have my Flatmaster 150 on my Xenostar 61 Mod 2, uh, and uh, I'm taking the uh, flats right now in Nina. If you're not familiar with Nina, uh, it's uh, I find it has helped me immensely, but there are many tools out there that you can use to accomplish the same thing and that's not really uh, the purpose of this video uh, but just for a quick overview I'm taking uh, 50 flats and 40 uh, dark flats or flat darks. Um, as a beginner it has been I don't want to say a challenge but when I think I know what I need to know about calibration frames uh, I read something on cloudy nights uh, and someone has a different view or a different opinion or oftentimes people are saying the same thing but they may be say, uh, saying it in, in a different manner and for me as a beginner um, I don't want to say it made my head spin at times but I did see some inconsistencies so it was important for me to kind of um, you know, identify an authoritative source uh, that I was comfortable with that spoke in a language around calibration frames that I could understand and um, where I could use uh, their information to guide how I do my calibration frames. So, um, again, being a beginner, Sometimes, at least in my experience, I think I know something, but then I'm exposed to something additional from another person that challenges what I think I know, and then I go, well, what do I really know? And then I start researching again. I've kind of put that all to bed from my perspective, and uh, I'm about to share with you the two videos and one article uh, the article was identified by a person, I think today, on uh, Cloudy Nights, uh, which I found a nice, concise overview of the calibration process uh, and the calibration frames and why we take them. And then I'm going to share two videos with you uh, from Adam Block. Uh, since I've started the journey on Pix Insight, I'm using Adam Block as my uh, training partner I'm taking his online uh, courses uh, to help me understand and uh, learn how to use uh, Pix Insight. And I think Adam's got two fantastic videos that explains the calibration process. Um, so let's um, let's bring these up. And um, the first is this article. Um, a person identified it this morning when there was another thread around calibration frames. I think the original poster was a beginner like me and uh, kind of, I'm paraphrasing, said, what are these calibration frames all about? And, of course, a, a good discussion uh, ensued and different people uh, had slightly varying opinions. And uh, but overall, it was a good it was a good conversation, very cordial. Uh, some of the comments were, well, uh, that's, you know, what, how, what you've always, how you've always been doing it, you know, uh, but you can do it this other way and back and forth and those type of things. And um, 
So this article here, I did read through it. It's a good article. I'll put the link in the description of uh, the video. Uh, but um, the person runs through, uh, I think, in a, in a very, at least for me as a beginner, easy to understand presentation on why we do these calibration frames and why they're important. So if you have, uh, if you're new, if you're a beginner, if you have questions about calibration frames, uh, you know, the links that I'm going to put in might be a good uh, place for you to start to maybe kind of fill in the gaps and uh, reach a point where you're very um, kind of uh, confirmed on how you're going to approach the calibration frame process for your particular imaging camera. Um, so again, uh, easy to read, uh, very good. Uh, and then uh, over here on this side, uh, how many should I take of each? And again, uh, I am going to follow, uh, well, I want to make a caveat here. You're going to see bias frames. Um, since I have the ASI 294MM Pro, it has a characteristic about it where you get some, what I call, amp glow in the upper right-hand corner of the frame. And that amp glow can vary, as I understand it, based on exposure time. And, and really, I think that, uh, uh, you know, there's what you're trying to do, I think, with the bias frames and uh, flat darks and flats or flat darks is you're trying to eliminate this uh, effect of dark current. Uh, the longer you expose, uh, it's variable, as I understand it. But uh, again, I'm a beginner, so I'm probably not using the right words. And what I found sometimes when you're out on a forum or something and you don't choose the right words, uh, you'll quickly get a lot of feedback telling you uh, you don't quite have it uh, nailed down. And that's fine. Uh, but, um, you know, and that's just part of the feedback process. So again, with uh, my ASI 294MM, uh, I am not going to take bias frames anymore. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, flat frames and uh, flat darks or dark flats in lieu of uh, the need to take uh, bias frames because of the, uh, I think as Adam Block, if you watch his video, says there's well-behaved CMOS uh, sensors and there's some that may not be as well behaved. And uh, in I'm in the may not be as well behaved as I understand it. So that's why I'm going to uh, skip the bias. I'll take the darks. I'll take the flat frames, the dark flat frames. And I'll process using those uh, calibration frames uh, going forward. Um, I did want to point out these two videos here. Um, if you're not familiar with Adam Block, you might want to get familiar with him. I found that this video, uh, part three, uh, uh, WBPP, it's a, um, it's a process or might be a script in, uh, Pix Insight. And, uh, but basically it's part three of WBPP 2.0 calibration of data part one. And then part four, calibration part two. These two uh, videos really nailed it for me on how I am going to go forward when I'm thinking about calibration frames, what they do, and the importance of using them. So um, I basically wanted to uh, point that out. So maybe um, in summary, I'm really just sharing with you, uh, and this is not the only topic, calibration frames. Um, I'm also trying to answer a question right now of the ratio between filters. Since I'm a narrow band uh, imager, I'm about to do a, a second project, maybe the soul or the uh, heart nebula, and I'm going to use the uh, HA, um, O3, and S2 filters, and I need to have an idea what the ratio is I think a lot of these can be answered by trial and error, and I'm open to that. But when I look around, I see a lot of varying opinions. And so I just raise that to just say that oftentimes on these topics, you'll get a range of opinions. And then as a beginner, some of the uh, D 
depth of the explanations are really a, beyond my current capability to understand them. So I kind of got, I'm, I'm sure they're very factual, very technically correct and everything. Uh, but I kind of need as a beginner right now, more of an abbreviated uh, version. And, um, you know, I think between uh, this article here um, and uh, Adam's two videos, uh, I've got what I need for right now, which will keep me on solid ground when it comes to capturing the required calibration frames and using those calibration frames as part of my imaging uh, processing uh, process. All right, I didn't uh, have much more. Um, I am going to be heading down to uh, GMARS. Um, and this is, um, I recently requested to be assigned this pad. It was open and available. So now when I go down there, uh, I'll have a pad available to me uh, as a priority user of the pad. And so when I travel the seven hours to go down to the site, uh, I know that I'll be able to set up and stay set up and I'm not setting up on somebody else's pad where I would have to tear down and move because they have first uh, right of use. Um, so I'm going to go into GMARS probably the 31st of October and then I'm moving over to Borrego Springs. There is a conference there called Nightfall. Uh, hosted by the Riverside Astronomical Society. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm staying in an RV, RV park, and there's also a hotel there, so I should be able to image at night. So my M31 project is still uh, in progress, uh, but I should be finishing up the collection and the data I need on that project when I'm in Landers uh, in, or GMARS. And then I need another project, so that's why I'm looking at a uh, narrowband project of either the Soul or the Heart Nebula, I think. Uh, so more on that in, a, in another video on how I'm planning uh, for, for, those, uh, for that new project. Okay, if you like this kind of content, uh, please give it a thumbs up. As always, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Again, what I try to do is give the perspective of me as a beginner and some of the things that I'm uh, challenged by. Maybe as a beginner, you're also challenged by. Or maybe as a beginner, you had calibration uh, nailed from the get-go and it was not an issue for you. Unfortunately, it was not that easy for me because it seemed like I couldn't quite put in a, identify one authoritative source that said, you know, here is the prescriptive way to do it. Uh, but I think I'm close to it now between the article and the two videos uh, from uh, Adam Block. And so this is how I am going to go forward. So uh, I think that's about it. Hopefully you have clear skies wherever you may be in the world. Other than that, till next time.